Hey guys, so I'm finally doing a tutorial for the sheep. This is like such a requested tutorial. Um, and I finally have the time to do it. So, yeah, this is my sheep design. And there's a little difference. So on this guy, I attached his head right to the front. And I didn't like it, but I did made this um, second one. And I was writing down the pattern. And I put his head a little more up. And I love how this one looks. Um, but yeah, I love this design. It's so cute. And it's not too band heavy because... He's fluffy, so it's a little bit heavy, but not too bad. Um, what else was I gonna say? Yeah, I'm happy to be finally be making tutorials again. I know I took like a two week break. I kind of just like disappeared, but school started for me, and then I just didn't have the time. Um, but I'm back, and I just wanted to say I don't know how many of my followers are just gonna watch this video right away, but in case you do, um, because of school, I'm kind of just gonna be like coming every two weeks, and then like leaving, and then coming back. Just because of how my school schedule is and when I have to put projects due. That it'll probably be like once every two weeks I come make tutorials and then like disappear for three. <laughs> but yeah, I'm not losing interest. I'm just swamped with schoolwork kind of right now. But I think that's it on that. So, sheep. Um, this is definitely one of my easier designs I think. Because the only things we attach are the head and then the legs. And it's really easy and because he's a giant ball of fluff it is really hard to mess up. At least I think so. Yeah, the part hardest part is probably doing the body because it has the fluff, but you get used to it like halfway and then it's good. Um, so the band count. Um, for the fluff color, it is 190, and that's where I say it's a little band heavy, but it's basically doubled of what it would be because he's fluffy. And then for the sheep color, it's only 31 bands. But yeah, I think that is it for these guys. So, of course, you're going to need a hook. You don't need a double-ended hook. I'm just using it because I'm comfortable with this hook. You're going to need something to mark your rows. I'll be using a C-clip. And then you're going to want something for the eyes. I don't know if they have safety eyes this small, but you could use safety eyes or whatever you want. Bands. Um, I'll be using beads again. And yeah, I think that's it. My Oh, also the color of my sheep today. He'll His head will still be gray, but the actual sheep color, he's going to be pastel purple. And now I think that's it. So we'll get started. I'm just going to move my sheep out of the way. So, to start, you're going to want to, well, I we we're going to start with a sheep body, so you're going to need your sheep um, fluff color, or whatever, that's what I've been calling it. Um, and then to start, I'm just picking up some bands. Oops, okay. To start, you are just going to, oops, let me make sure it's in focus. Now it's not in focus. There we go. Okay, so to start, you're just going to wrap a band three times in your hook, so that's one, two, three. And then you're going to pull a band through everything on your hook. And you're going to put both ends back on, and then you're going to push the back one over the front one, and that's a stitch. Um, of course, we're going to want to add fluff onto this one, so what I usually do is I will pull it off, and I'll double a band on my hook put it back on and then I'll just push this onto that band like that so now we're gonna go back into the cat band and we're gonna do pretty much the same thing wait no 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 we're not <laughs> because this has fluff every time before you go like back into it or into the next stitch what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna cap just wrap a band once on your hook like that and now you're gonna go back into the cap band. This is also probably the hardest part because it's very squished. Oops. But you're just gonna go back in and just like before you're just gonna pull a band through not the whole, everything though this time you're just gonna pull through just the cap band. And you put both ends back on your hook and just like before you push the back one over the front one and you push the fluff over or the the capped band I guess. And then you push the loop from last time over too. We're just going to do that three more times. The exact same thing. Uh, can't speak today either. That exact same thing. So you're just going to cap a band on your hook. And like I said, you do this every time. This whole sheep body before you go back in. So you just cap a band on your hook. And then you're going to go back in through the cap band. Pull a band through just the cap band. Then you push the back one over the front one. Push the fluff over. And then you push the loop from last time over. 
like that. Just do this two more times. So once again, just make sure you always have the fluff on first. I always nearly forget to do that. And so I've done it four times, so we need five total. So this will be the last one. I'll show you how you count it right now. Like that. So you should have five loops now. And the way I usually count it is you can kind of see it in the cat band. But in case you don't really know what to count. You can count the loops here on top. So you go one. You count the one on your hook. So that's one, two, three, four. And then that one's five. So now we're going to move on to the next row. And the next row we will be increasing everything but first I just realized we need to put the c-clip in so instead of going to the cat band what you're going to do is you're going to go into the first loop we did and don't go through the fluffy bit which you'll see it's kind of hard to explain but I'm guessing you can see it um you're going to want to go into that loop oh wait fluff first then you're just going to go into that loop and you're going to make a stitch so same thing, you pull it through just a loop, and you put the back one over the front one, put the, fl the fluff bit over, and then you put that last loop over. And this is where we're going to put our seat clip. Like that. So now we are going to be increasing everything, so every single stitch we do is going to be an increase, and I'll show you what it increases. I'm just picking up some bands. The sheet might take a little while just because it takes longer because I keep forgetting to add the fluff and I always forget to do the fluff. So like I said, this whole time, this whole body, before you do any stitches, you're just going to cap a band on your hook like this to make the fluffy, to make it look fluff, ah, to make it look fluffy. Yeah. So now, like I said, we're going to be increasing. So basically what it increases is instead of going into the next stitch and doing a single crochet or... I always just say like doing a normal stitch. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to go into the same loop you just went in. You're going to make another stitch and that will be an increase. So an increase is just when you put um, two bands in one stitch. Well, two stitches in one loop. That makes more sense. Um, yeah, so we're just going to be doing this until we get back to the C-clip. So you just cap a band first because fluff, and then you go into the next loop, make a stitch, and then because we're increasing, you go back in, and you make another stitch. So like I said, you're just basically putting two stitches in every loop until we get back to the C-clip. I'm going to have to pick up bands a lot more this time too because it uses them a lot faster just because of the fluff. I kind of want to make a bunch of um, pastel sheep just because I think it would look cute. But yeah. So we're just doing two stitches in every loop until we get back to the C-clip. This design does also take a bit because you always have to make sure you're not going through like any of the previous fluff and you're going through the right loop. And that's probably the most difficult part about this design, but I still don't think I would consider it a harder design, just because it's not too bad. It just takes a bit. Almost back to the C-clip. The tutorial is really long already, I'm sorry. I think it's just because of... I don't know. But once you get back to the C-clip, what you're going to do is you're just going to make a stitch in the band with the C-clip in it like normal and move the C-clip up. So you just do the same thing. Then you move it up. 
and just like that we are done with that row. So after this row you should have 10 loops, so if you count them you have 1, because you count the 1 on your hook. And then 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, so you should have 10 loops. And now this next row we are going to be increasing every third stitch, so I'll show you what I mean by that. I'm just picking up some bands. I do, like I was saying before I started explaining, um, <laughs> I feel like this tutorial is going to be really long just because it takes me so much longer to loom this just because of the fluffy extra like band you have to add so he looks fluffy. But yeah. Yep, okay, so like I said, we'll be increasing every third, and basically what I mean by that, so this is one, and so since we're not increasing on this one, you don't go back and do another stitch, you go to the next loop, and you just make a stitch, and again, because we're not increasing, you just do one, so it's one, two, and then on the third one, you'll do an increase, so you go through that loop, and you'll be putting two in this loop. So basically you just do one stitch and then one stitch and then on the third one you do two, which is an increase. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> I feel like I'm explaining bad today, but I'm kind of tired, so... Probably shouldn't be making a tutorial, but I this is just the only time I have. But yeah, and then once you've increased it, once again you'll just do two with just one stitch in it. And then on the third one, like I said before, you're doing an increase, so you're going to put two stitches in it. And we just keep doing this until we get back to the C-clip. This does take me so much longer to loom just because there's a lot of stuff going on. <laughs> I don't know how many times I've said it takes me longer, but yeah. I have been designing a lot though. I did notice that. Like, ever since I'm in this loom game, when there's like themes, sometimes I can't find like a tutorial for what I want to make, so I just design it. So I, I feel like I'm really behind on tutorials, which isn't good, but yeah. If you f see my Instagram, and there's a couple things I haven't posted on my Instagram yet that I know are like original designs, but <laughs> I just don't want to post them because I know people are going to be like, I want a tutorial for it, and I'm like, I'm so behind. Even though I love making these, I just, I don't like feeling like I'm behind. Yeah. So once again, we're just doing two single ones, and then you do an increase on the third. And don't forget to cap a band on your hook first. Because I always almost forget to add that band. And then once you get to the C-clip, you're just going to do a stitch like normal, and you'll just move the C-clip up onto the stitch you just made. So after this row, you should have 13 um, bands, so if you count them, you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Now it gets a bit repetitive, so now we're going to be doing three rows with just one stitch every loop. Um, doing single crochets or just not increasing however you want to say it. That is what we're doing <laughs> um, And I'll show you for one row But then I think I'm gonna go off camera because it takes me a while to do these rows because like I said before <laughs> The fluff is kind of a pain <laughs> But I think it looks cute. So Yeah, I'll stay on for one row and then I'm probably gonna go off to do the other two So like I said, we're just doing one stitch in every single one of these loops until we get back to the C-clip. No increasing. So you're just doing one. And after each one of these rows, you should still have 13. Oops, things are coming apart. But yeah. So 
you're just putting one stitch in every loop until you get back to the sequin. And just make sure you're going to the right loops. I know it's kind of hard to tell with the fluff, but just be careful. And make sure you don't miss any, because some of mine right now are blending in. Like, I can't tell if it's a loop. Okay, no. But yeah. I actually um, took one, one of the weeks that I took a break was a week before school and it was because I had some stuff I wanted to do, but I was also kind of getting frustrated because, um, I'll make a video about this at some point, but <laughs> for those of you who are just looming with me, I'll just say something, because if you check my Instagram, I put a post out because I was getting really frustrated that people kept taking my designs and saying they're theirs and... It's not fun because I do work hard on them. I know, like, I do put out a lot of designs, but you, <laughs> I feel like people don't realize how much I loom at the same time. Like, yeah, you see a lot, but you don't see the, like, ten fails that came before that. Um, and yeah, I just got, I got really frustrated because I was like, if I, I'm just going to keep putting out designs and people are just going to keep stealing them. Like, do I really want to do that? But then I like, I like doing this. It's just frustrating. Again. So I took one week break because of that, and then the other week was because I got with school, and then I posted. Yeah, no, the other week was just because of school. And then last weekend I posted my collection video, and that was fun. But yeah. And the thing was, like, I was planning on filming some stuff last weekend, and then. And then, my teacher told me three days before my drawing was due that I did it wrong, because I'm an art major, so I'm taking drawing classes. And he told me three days before it was due was wrong, and I was planning on having my thing done by the weekend. But then I ended up having three days to basically completely start over, and somehow I did it, but I also didn't sleep much. So, yeah, I just got behind. Almost there. My group chat I'm in just keeps talking right now. Like the not oops. The notifications keep popping up. And once again, once you get back to the C clip, all you're gonna do is you are going to take a stitch like normal and then just move it up. C clip. So that was one row, and you're just going to do that exact same thing for three not th three rows total so two more rows and after each row you should have 13 so and you might want to count after each row because sometimes with the extra loops we're putting in to make it look fluffy you might like I almost mistaked a um one of those loops for a um for a stitch so you just want to probably want to double check after every row but if I count so I have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve wait why do I only have twelve did I count wrong one two Three, four, five, six, ten. Oh no, there's thirteen. I just counted wrong. <laughs> yeah, so you just want to do that for two more rows and then come back and I'll show you what to do next. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I just finished doing those two extra rows for a total of three rows and after those three rows you should have um, 13 stitches still and your design should look something like this. So now we are going to be decreasing so we're going to start decreasing i also realized at the start i always forget to say you're going to need stuffing um but yeah you're going to need something to stuff your design you're not going to need it right now but you're going to need it in a bit i just always forget to say it but yeah i didn't know the eyes were in the shot um yeah so like i said we're going to start decreasing so we're going to be this round we will be decreasing every third and it's going to be the same thing as increasing where you do two um, normal and then you do a decrease. So I'll show you how to do that. So this is one. So I'm going to do another one. And then we will be doing a decrease on the next one because we did two. So this would be the third. And to decrease what you do is you grip the front one of the first loop. Like that. And then you grab the back one of the next loop. 
and then you just make a stitch and that's a decrease and I'll show you again so once again we're gonna do two normal so one two and then on the third one we'll do a decrease so once again you discard the front one of the first loop and the back one of the next loop like that and we're just gonna keep doing this until we get back to the C clip so it's one then this is two and we'll be doing a decrease so once again, you just grab the front part of the first loop, the back part of the next loop, and then make a stitch. And then once you get to the sequel, you'll just move it up. I run out of purple bands again. <laughs> Like I said, once you get to the C-clip, you'll just move it up. Like that. Okay, so after that last row, you should have 10 loops left. So if you count them, you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And now you're going to want to stuff him. So you're going to need want whatever you're gonna use for stuffing. I'll be using cotton balls just because that's what I have. And I'm gonna tear them up a bit. And then just stuff them in. And you can take your hook out to stuff it because because the C-clip's there so as long as you don't pull in it too much it should stay. So that might be way too much stuffing. We're already almost done with the body so. Okay, and then once you finish stuffing it, if you took your hook out, you can just put your hook back in where the C-clip is and then just continue. So now the next row we are going to be decreasing every other stitch. So this is one that we didn't decrease, so the next one we'll be decreasing. So basically you just do one single or normal or whatever you want to call it, and then you do a decrease. So this is one. Oops, is it focused? There. So one, and then this next one's a decrease. So once again, you have the front one of the first loop and the back one of the next loop, and it gets kind of hard to see here. So, because I just decrease, I just do one normal on the next one. And then we do a decrease, and it's kind of hard to show how I decrease now because it's getting kind of tight. But you just do the same thing, front one of the first loop, back one of the next loop. Once again, you just do one. Then you're going to do a decrease. And then do one. I'm just picking up some bands again. And then the next decrease should be on the C clip, so just do it on the C clip and then. Um, instead of moving the C clip up this time though, you could totally just take the C clip out. It's no big deal. So I just did a decrease on the most C-clip, and at this point you can just take it out, it doesn't matter anymore, we're pretty much almost done. But after that last row you should have, I 
I think seven left. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I only have six, but that's okay. If honestly, if you have like one more or one extra after this row, it doesn't really matter because we're just closing him up. As long as like if you like, I wrote seven, but I have six, or if you have seven, it doesn't matter too much because it's the end. So yeah. So I'm going to add fluff on this next one, but I think that's going to be it. And oh, this next row, we're just decreasing everything till close. So there's no singles or normals anymore. We're just decreasing. It's really hard to see. So yeah, I'm just going to do one more with the fluff on it. And then I'm going to switch to just decreasing. Don't add fluff. Just decrease because then it gets harder to pull. Then it doesn't look as nicely closed up, I guess. And then once you're on your last decrease, what you're going to do is usually what I do to close it up is you put that last decrease on your hook and that band. And instead of pulling it through just the decrease, you pull it through everything on your hook. Both ends back on, back one over the front one, and then you pull tight. Like that. And then just tuck the tail in. And the nice thing about this one is, like, you don't have to tuck it in so clean I guess you can kind of just pull it in and then if it sticks out you can just leave it and it looks like extra fluffy bits but yeah that is it for the body and that is by far the part that takes the longest so now we're going to do the head and the head I actually think is really fun and easy to do so you're going to need whatever color you want for the head I'm, I'm going to be using gray like I was using before we'll just set this off to the side for a second so to start the head just making sure my camera's focused. You're going to start with your gray or head color. Whatever color you want for the bottom part here. And you will be... I'm, gonna, I'm just checking something. <laughs> okay, never mind. Um, and you will be wrapping... What was I doing? I just totally forgot. So once again, you'll be wrapping... Wrapping a band around your hook three times. I couldn't think of what I was trying to say. But you'll just be wrapping a band around your hook three times. It should look something like this. And it's the, we're going to do like... This is like the exact same way we started the sheet body. But without fluff. Um, yeah. So like I said, you wrap a band three times around your hook. And then you're going to pull a band through everything. Then you put the back one over the front one and make a stitch. And you're going to want to go in three more times. into the cap band making stitches so we have four in total I hope that makes sense <laughs> I really should not be making tutorials while I'm tired but yeah so you just go through the cap band just like we did before pull a band through the cap band just the cap band you put the back one over the front one and then you put that last loop over with it and then after, and you're supposed to do this four times, and you'll know you have four times when you can count, so you'll just count one, two, three, four. And then once you have four times, instead of going back into the cat band, you're going to go into that first loop, and make sure you're going into the first loop. It was easier to see on the last one, but sometimes you'll mistake this for the first loop, but it's actually that. And you're just going to go into the first loop, make a stitch, and then you'll put a seat clip on this one. Oops. Like that. So now this row we will be increasing everything and basically like before you just put two in every loop until you get back to the C-clip. And I'm just picking up some bands before I start doing that. So this one already has one in it so we're just going to go back in and do one more. And this is really tight so I'm sorry if you can't see but it's kind of hard to show. But you're just putting two in every loop until you get back to the C-clip. This is so hard to show. It's like really tight. And 
And then once you get back to the C clip, which I'm almost there, you're just going to make a stitch in the band that has a C clip on it, and then you'll move it up. Oh my god. Unhook. There we go. Like that. And after that last row, I kind of try to flatten it out and not make it so pointy. But after that last row, you should have eight. So if you count, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I know it's very hard to see what I was doing, but all you were doing was just putting two in every loop. Until you get back to the C clip, increasing everything. Yeah. But now, after that last row, we are going to be doing two rows, just putting one in every stitch in our gray color still. And this should be pretty fast because it's not hard to do. Yeah. Yep. Um, so like I said, you're just putting one stitch every loop until you get back to the C-clip. And because this is so small, you can do it pretty fast. And you do this for two rows, like I said. It feels so weird doing it without the fluff. I keep feeling like I'm forgetting, I'm forgetting something. Because after making the whole body with it, I'm just like, oh my god, I forgot I kept a band on. And then I'm like, no, you didn't. B. And then once again, once you get to the C clip, you'll just move it up. And we'll just do one row, one more row, just like that. Just putting one in every loop until you get back to the C clip. And after each of these rows, you should still have eight. I do feel like this is an easy design though, like it's not hard. Honestly, the body's the hardest part. But now we're almost done, because it comes together really quickly after you just make the body. And then once you get to the C-clip, you're just going to move it up. I don't know why I picked up so much gray, because that is actually it for the gray. So once you've done two rows with the gray, you should have... You should still have eight, so if you count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you should have done two rows, and it should look something like this. But now we are going to switch back over to our purple to do this little top fluffy bit. So I'm just picking up my purple bands. And we are going to be doing one row normal again. The only thing different is that you have to add fluff this time. So cap a band on your hook first, just like before, and then make a stitch. Like that. And we just do this all the way around till we get back to the C clip. So it's one row normal again, not like increasing or decreasing or anything, but we're just adding fluff and switching colors and that's what's different. Every time after I film these tutorials, I always just feel so like tired of talking by the end. Like right now my voice is starting to feel like I'm getting tired, but I have another tutorial to film today. So yeah, interesting. I also hate how like this camera picks up so many mouth noises so easily. It's just not fun. But e. I'm just going until the C clip. But yeah, I'm getting kind of tired of talking. <laughs> uh, the struggle. I do think it's funny though, because I took a speech class over the summer, and I could not do a speech to save my life. And they were like, just like you had to film them. And then put them as unlisted on like YouTube and then send your professor the link. And I got bad grades. I passed with a C, but um, my teacher basically told me I was hopeless for ever public speaking. And I think it's funny because like I filmed these hour tutorials, no problem, but I couldn't do a speech. It was just hard.
Okay, once you get to C clip, you're just gonna move up. And you should still have eight after this row, which you might want to count because I know the fluff just makes everything confusing. I'm not gonna count though because I'm lazy. Um, so after that row, you are just going to be we're going to be decreasing every other stitch, and we're still adding fluff. So this is one normal, so the next one's gonna be a decrease. And then we do one more normal again because we just decreased. It's really hard to see. Did I do a normal one or did I decrease? Okay, I think I know what I did. Decrease. Maybe do a normal. Then the next one will be a decrease, but it's on the one with the C clip, just like before. So just take the C clip out. Like that, and it's really hard to tell, but you should have one, two, three, four. I think I have five bands left. But like I said before, on this last row before we close it up, you don't really have to worry if you have one extra or not. It's not a big deal. But yeah. So now we're going to be decreasing everything till it's closed. So I usually do one more with the fluff. One more decrease with it. And then on the next one, I won't do it. So this is like the last one I do with the fluff. And then on the next decrease, I just... I just make a stitch. And this next one's the last one, so just like before, I'll put the decrease on my hook. And then I'll get a band, I'll pull it through everything on my hook, put both ends back on, put the back one over the front one, and then pull tight. And then you just tuck the tail in. And now the hardest part of the sheep is over. And now we just do some simple attaching. Even though I'm always so bad at attaching on camera. And I didn't pull the tail in well. I'm so bad doing this on camera. Oops. Okay, I think that's good enough. Just like that. And if it looks a little too pointy, what I did with the other one is you could just kind of push it in like this. Like that. And then before I attach the head to the sheep, I usually put all the um, little details on first, like the ears and then the eyes. So we'll do that, and then we'll attach everything to the sheep. So to do the ears, all you're going to do is you're going to wrap a band four times around your hook. So you just double it, and then usually what I do is I get both of these and just double it again. I find that easier. But it should be wrapped around four times. Then you get another band, double it, and then pull this onto that doubled band. And then just get a regular gray band. Actually, no. I'm going to get a purple band. And pull it through the ear. And then just pick a spot where you want it. I, uh, you can kind of tell what shape it is, so I usually just go on one of the edges. And pick, we, well, pick what you want in the front, because there's all this odd spot where we switched colors, but I want this to be the front, so. And then I just pick a spot towards the side of the head. And then I'll just put the ears in. just heard my mom aggressively like shush my dad because I'm filming and like it's not gonna film it like pick anything up that far but I think it's funny oh my god my sheep's hair is still like crazy but yeah so you're just gonna do that again so once again you just get a band and wrap it four times around your hook the, the way I like to do it is I just get a band double it and get both those loops and double it again and then double a band and then pull that band onto this band. Oop. Like that. Oops. One of them didn't pull on. Oh my god, it's so hard to do this on camera. <laughs> there we go. And once again, you're going to get a purple band. And the reason I do a purple band is because you don't have to worry about the tail too much. Because you can just pull the end loop out the top and it'll just look like hair. Which is nice about this design.
just tie it into the side of the head. And see, this is what I mean. You could just go in and then release. Leave it towards the top and it won't look. Oh god. Okay, the top of his head needs help. But like that. Now he has ears. I think I did the ears right. But I think I did the ears right. I don't mean like I made them wrong. I mean I placed them right. But yeah, now you're just going to get your eyes and you're going to put them... I usually put them towards the end, so if you see these stitches towards the end, that's where I usually put the eyes. And you just slip knot these in. I feel like I'm going fast. Probably because I am. Oh god, this is the one that was a pain. I had one of the beads that wouldn't go through. I'm trying to show you what I'm doing. I'm sorry if I'm not explaining well. You just get your other eye, you slip knot it in. And then you tuck the tails in. And that is it for the head. So now you should have something that looks a little bit like this. And then you're going to get your body and we attach them. So. How I attach them is I'll usually get whatever the color of the sheep is just because it makes more sense and also you don't have to worry about hiding them too much like I said. If you just sort of tuck them in and then let them stick out it just looks like fluff. And then after this we just have the legs and there is a tail on my sheep but you can't see it but I know it's there so that's why I put it on. But yeah my family's so quiet and they could probably hear me filming and now I don't like it. My camera's also falling too. It's not good. Okay, so to attach the head, I feel like my camera's not. One minute. Okay. Fix my camera situation. Um, so I usually will put the head... You could put it on either side, honestly. I don't know which I like better, because on this guy I put it where the cap band was, like you can kind of see it. But it might be better actually this time to do it on this side, because I like how it closed up. So, just pick whichever side you want to be at the front. It really doesn't matter, because it's a circle. And then... Oops, this head's backwards. Pick where you want the head. I usually try to put it so it looks like it's a little bit on top of the body. Then I go in... Oh, this is really hard to see because it's dark. Go in through part of the head. Then you just go in through part of the body. Oh my god. This is really hard to do on camera because I can't see anything. Oh no. Hmm. Okay. But you go in through head and go in through part of the potty and you just slip knot it in. And you're just going to tie it down a bunch of times. Oh gosh, I think I put my head on crooked. It's just so hard to see on camera. Okay, I'm going to tuck the tails in later. Because now his head looks like it wants to go that way. Through part of the body... I'll just slip knot it. And I only had to slip knot the other head three times, but this one looks like it's staying on with two, so I'm going to leave it. And then, like I said, you just kind of tuck the tails in. Like that. And you can put your head wherever you want. Like I said, I use, I like how it looks better a little on top of the potty, but you could put it also just like directly in front if you like how that looks. And my head actually stayed in with only tying it in twice. I think the most I've had to tie it in is like three times, so it's not too hard to tie on. But the final thing, so the legs. The legs are super easy, and it's the same kind of thing of where you just slip knot them in. So to make the legs, what I do is I get two bands, and I wrap them around my hook four times. Like that. And then I'd get a purple band or whatever color your fluff is. Pull it through everything on my hook. This is kind of hard to do because it's tight. Like that. And then once you have that on your hook, I try to put the legs like... So they look like a square, if that makes sense. So I'm going to put his leg right here. 
you just pick a spot and slip knot it in. Like that. And then hide the tails. I love how easy the, the um, tails are to hide with this design. Though. Like it's so easy. And you're just going to do that three more times. So you just get two bands, you wrap them four times around your hook. Then you pull a purple band through it. I'm going to attach the leg. I'm going to put this one right here. Right here. Slip on it. Finishing the legs. I didn't say what I was doing because I feel like you know, but I'm just finishing them off. Could have gone off camera for this, but I didn't because I'm almost done. Only one more leg needed. Oh, that one might have been a little too close. <laughs> That's fine. They're just kind of hard to put on the band. Mm. I'm sorry this is taking me a second. I probably should have gone off camera. But the legs just take a second. There we go. Now his legs are in. Like that. And the last thing we're going to do is we are going to add the tail that I don't remember exactly how I did, but I think I did it like this. So you're going to get three bands and you're going to wrap them three or four times around your hook. I don't remember exactly how many I did. I'm going to do three. So one, two, three. And then you just pull a band through this kind of mess, I guess. So you just wrap three bands three times around your hook. Like that. And then pick a spot on the butt. And slip knot it in. And this will be it for the sheep. Like I said, you could probably do a more noticeable tail. I've tried to think of different ways to do a tail, but this is like the best I've got. And I mean, I know the tail's there, and I think that's all that matters. <laughs> um, so yeah, that is it for this tutorial. That took just as long as I expected it to, but still. <laughs> um, if you make any of these sheep, definitely share them with me on Instagram. I'd love to see how yours come out and like the different ways you do it. Well, you can do some different things with these sheeps. I think it would be fun to make them like different colors, like maybe like a rainbow pastel sheep. That would be cute. Um, subscribe if you want to see more tutorials from me. I will be coming out with tutorials, just not as frequent as it was before. Um, I'll have my Instagram down in the description as long as, as, eh, as well as like the pattern and everything else in case you got confused at any point or at the end. And yeah, I think that's it. So I'm going to go. Bye.